Welcome back to the lab. Now today we want to talk about combustion. Now before we get things burning, let's take a look at the three things that are required for the combustion process to occur. And then we'll do some experiments to see how those three things affect the burning of a candle. There are three things that are needed for combustion to occur. We need fuel, we need oxygen, and we need heat. Now if any one of these is absent, the combustion process will not start or it will cease if already underway. So let's take a look at some simple candle experiments to investigate these three elements for combustion. Now let's take a look at our candle flame. First of all, this pink area here is the candle wax. This black section is the wick of the candle. Now what happens, the radiant heat from the flame melts the wax and the wax is drawn up into the wick. Now the heat also vaporizes the wax into a combustible gas. You'll see this blue area here is the hottest portion of the flame. Now this yellow portion of the flame is actually where the gas particles and the soot are beginning to glow due to incandescence. Now let's take a look at our flame in action. Again, you'll notice the combustion is not occurring at the wax surface. It's actually occurring up above it. Now here's my setup to test how heat affects combustion. Now what I have is a piece of high resistance nichrome wire between these two alligator clips attached to a rheostat. So if I turn up the current to the rheostat, you'll see that the wire glows red hot. So now I can apply heat without having a flame. So now let's attach this heat to some fuel in an oxygen environment and see if we can get combustion to begin. Okay, so now I have my hot wire attached to a match which serves as my fuel source. And of course the air around the match uh, provides the oxygen for the combustion. So let's apply heat and see if we can initiate combustion. Sure enough, it works. Now let's see what happens when we restrict the amount of fuel available for combustion. I apply heat, the fuel begins to burn, eventually the fuel runs out, and the combustion process ceases. Now let's take a look and see what happens if I limit the amount of oxygen available for the combustion process. Now what I have is the candle sitting in a tray of water. I'm going to place a beaker over it. The water seals the beaker. The combustion process consumes the oxygen in the beaker. And eventually that oxygen is consumed and the combustion process ceases. Now you should notice an interesting little occurrence down here is the water gets drawn up into the beaker as a candle flame extinguishes. But I'll leave it to the student to do your own thought experiment to try to explain what's going on. Now what I have here is a medicine syringe and a flexible plastic hose. And so when I depress the syringe, I get a puff of air out of the hose. I can use that to blow away the heat and the uh, combustible gases from the candle and see what happens. Now I use the syringe instead of my breath just to make sure I don't have too much carbon dioxide affecting the results. Now earlier I showed how heat can initiate the combustion process. So let's take a look to see if we can remove heat from the system and see if we can get the flame to extinguish. Now what I want you to watch here is I have my puffer, and so this is where the uh, puff of air will come out. And I also want to observe the wax. Now the wax will tell you that things are warm and it'll start to drip. And see what happens when we apply the puff of air and extinguish the flame. Now you see the dripping wax solidified, so that's an indication that I removed heat from the system. That's not the complete explanation. You recall that the wax is also vaporized by the heat and creates a combustible gas. I'm also blowing that combustible gas away, thus removing some of the fuel from the system, and hence the flame will extinguish. Well, that'll do it for this lab session. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about the combustion process. Now, I hope to see you next time on Labrat Scientific.